Hi everyone, welcome back to Girls Dream Big's video blog series featuring incredible women and their story. I'm Stacey Tobman, founder and CEO of Girls Dream Big, and you are in for a treat today. We have the real life version of NCIS here, which is, is pretty unbelievable, but quite true. Mm -hmm. uh, some people compare her to Mariska Hargitay, I think yeah, that's how you say it, yeah, from yeah. SVU. It's pretty unbelievable. I sat across from her at lunch a few weeks ago and heard her story and was like, what? Are you making this stuff up? <laughs> and so I was very eager to get her on our video blog so you could hear just how amazing she is and that someone could be watching that show today, even though it's not quite like real life. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> but aspire to be like that and that it is quite possible. The impossible is possible, so I love that. Absolutely. So we are honored to have you here today, Heather. Thank you. Yeah. I'm super happy to be here. And so you started a company called Safe in the City. Right. I think that's such a fun name, and I've been stumbling to say it because I want to say Sex in the City, but I think it's amazing that you played off of that. It's one of my favorite shows. Mine too. So, can you tell us a little bit about Safe in the City? Sure. At Safe in the City, we provide workshops to girls. High school girls, college girls, women coming into the real world. And what we do is we give them safety tips and tricks to keep, you know, they're going into the world for the first time. Lots of them are very naive to all the dangers that are out there. We want to empower the girls to be their own best defense. That's our goal at Safe in the City. So we do that by workshops and provide some great um, um, self-defense courses. And I think what's so important is there's a lot of people out there trying to do these things. Right. But I don't think anyone that I know at least is bringing the street cred that you're bringing to the table. And you, right. you've seen it from a much different level and can really speak to it from a real way. So, you know, can you tell us how you're a girl dreaming big and kind of your history too? Sure, absolutely. Um, so I was a special agent with NCIS, Naval Criminal Investigative Service, like the TV show. <laughs> but you said it's not quite... It's not quite true. You know, in real life, when you interrogate a bad guy for eight hours, they generally smell. <laughs> so uh, it's not as easy as they make it look. Or glamorous. Sure. It's not as glamorous. No, 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 no. It's generally two o'clock in the morning when uh, you were sleeping and yeah. you get called out of bed because uh, criminals are very inconsiderate. <laughs> uh, they aren't mindful of my sleep. Right. Uh, so yeah, you're generally not as pretty as Mariska is and not as well put together as the NCIS TV show, but we try. Uh, so yeah, I was especially doing with NCIS for 14 years. Um, when I started, I was very young. I was out of graduate school, so I was about 26, and I didn't look like a cop, so I went immediately into undercover narcotics. Um, I bought drugs and got paid to do it. And I thought, this, <laughs> that sounds pretty this interesting. is fantastic. Um, I couldn't believe I was getting a paycheck. So uh, I did that for a couple of years, got really good at it. And from there, I got to go to a special uh, unit with us. It's called special, Office of Special Projects, where I did surveillance, counter surveillance, and counter espionage. So I chased spies uh, <laughs> all over the world. And I come from Indiana. I didn't see the ocean until I was 19 years old. And then I was suddenly finding myself in parts of the world that I didn't even know existed, <laughs> chasing spies. <laughs> that sounds so made up. I mean, I know it's not. It's People, not. it's not made up, but. No, it was crazy. It was a crazy trip. Um, so I did that for about four years. And suddenly I was finding myself in these meetings at the Pentagon and, and being involved in things that were presidential briefs. And I was thinking in the back of my head, I wonder what I'm gonna have for dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting a little bored. So fortunately with NCIS, I was able to, after having some great successes um, in the counterintelligence world, I was able to go back to criminal work. Uh, I prefer the beginning, middle, end of investigation. So I went to work family and sexual violence primarily. So that means a lot of uh, rape investigations, child abuse, domestic violence, uh, child exploitation, uh, some narcotics and homicide also. So I went to a couple more duty stations. I was in New Hampshire, I was at Camp Lejeune, and along the way I had two little kiddos. So I was juggling being a special agent and a mom and a wife, <laughs> and there are plenty of ridiculous stories to go along with that. Not just as all moms have, all working moms, right. no different. Um, and along the way, and after a couple of of crazy stories and the seasons in my life started to change. Mm -hmm. And uh, although I had an amazing 20s and 30s, um, I started to realize that I I am not uh, infallible. You know? <laughs> it's pretty weird when you learn that, yes, right? It's yes, like, ah, What? Suddenly you realize that, that bad things can happen to you. Sure. And now with two little, little people, um, I looked at changing mm -hmm. the course of, of my life. But I had all this knowledge and I wanted to do something with it. I, I didn't want to just 
leave and, and never and never help anyone right. again. So after lots of plotting, um, well, I I go backwards a little bit. I became a supervisor with uh, NCIS and was transferred back to Chicago. So I was a supervisor for ten guys, and we covered ten states. And my uh, my team there were an amazing group of men who I was fortunate to lead for a while. Um, and I started looking into forming this company, Safe in the City. I knew it was time for me to go, uh, and I needed a way that I could still help uh, girls and women in a way that I felt was meaningful. Mm -hmm. So I started forming this company and eventually was able to leave NCIS, and now I'm doing And here this. you are. And here I am. <laughs> yeah. And what I think is so powerful about your message and you as a person is that I think we all have in our mind what a spy or, you know, what, you know federal agent looks like. And I love that, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a certain way, you right, know? Right, I think that's so important that no matter who you are or no matter what you're doing, you can go after that. Absolutely, absolutely. When I tell people what I did or, or when I was working as a special agent, when they would see me, they would often say, huh, you look like a second grade teacher. You know, I get that a lot. And little did they know what you were getting <laughs> Little did they know I was packing a 40. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, you can do anything. I don't look like a cop. I don't look like my job. But because of that, I was successful. Mm -hmm. I was a su successful interrogator because I don't look like one. Right. I could buy narcotics because I don't look like a cop. Uh, I use it to my advantage every single day. I think that's such a great message. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. And when I think about all the things you did, like buying drugs, interrogating criminals, start and starting a company, I mean, all of those things are huge and take courage. You know, what gave you the courage to go after those things? Uh, I would say definitely my family and friends. Uh, they encouraged me all along the way. You know, when I went to the training academy, I drove from Indiana to Georgia on my own in a little Celica. And how old were you? <laughs> so I was 26 years old. Okay. And I was still very naive. Um, I, I really didn't know what the world had in store for me, but I was taking this leap of faith that somehow things would work out. I had never shot a gun or, or hit someone or anything like that in my life, so this was a big thing. So my, uh, my friends, I was in a sorority in college, and those girls gave me the strength that I didn't know I had sometimes. Like I, I remember driving down to our academy and they made me a mixtape it was a long time ago, <laughs> and uh, with encouraging songs and songs that we loved in college, and all along the way telling me I could do it. Um, you know, when I was stationed in Washington D.C., I couldn't tell my friends what I was doing because it was, um, you know, counter espionage kind of stuff. But I just needed to tell them that I was tired and overworked and under pressure, and here I am at. 30 years old with the weight of presidential briefs on me. And, <laughs> and I called them one day just saying I needed them. And within days they were on a plane mm -hmm. to Washington DC where we spent four days of girl time um, going out, sightseeing, watching Lifetime movies in my tiny apartment with one chair and one couch. <laughs> and um, they supported me through that. They have been there through every change of my life, through this job through having babies, getting married, reverse order, getting married, <laughs> then having babies. Um, and now through this new season, they've encouraged me with my new company. And, and without them, I don't know that I would have the courage to do any of it. And I think that's so true. And I love that you bring that up because you know, the people you spend time with really impact your life in so many ways. I mean, you need to have that person that you can turn to who can really be there no matter what is going on. And so often I see high school girls and their friend groups really aren't helping them. They're bringing them down in a lot of ways. Yes. And the power of a positive group is life changing. I really believe that. I'm so nerdy. I probably said this quote on TV already or on camera already, but I really believe in the quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. It's from Jim Rohn. And I, I, I think it changes your life. And I love Absolutely. that you mentioned that in your story. Absolutely. It's absolutely true. Now, continuing down that path, when you think about yourself in high school and those early days, <laughs> looking back, is there something you wish you would have known going in or advice you'd give yourself? Yeah. Outside of a couple of really bad haircuts. Oh, don't we all have those? <laughs> I had the perfect massive like mall bangs. I had a very high mall bang. It's yeah. very impressive. Um, I would tell myself to relax. Mm -hmm. uh, I think as I've gotten older, I, I truly understand, I truly believe all things happen for a reason. 
And all those times where I was so stressed and so anxious and, and nervous about what was to come, I didn't take the time to enjoy the moment. That's a good point. You know, it's so cliche, but take the time to smell the roses, you know? <laughs> it's, it's true it's though. It's so true. Enjoy that moment that you're in because it's never gonna be there again. I spent a lot of time worrying about what comes next. What, you know, first what job am I gonna get? Then where am I gonna be transferred? Then what case am I gonna get next? And then um, is my kid, you know, when they're two, are they gonna go to college? And how am I gonna pay for it? You know, enjoy your time. If someone was watching this and has this love for NCIS and, <laughs> and it just has these dreams of pursuing something similar, uh, what advice would you give? To them. Sure. So a couple pieces of, of advice, make yourself stand out. Right now, NCS is, is very popular because of all the television shows, as are all federal law enforcement agencies. You know, um, I, I personally, when I got on board with NCS, I had to apply with the FBI, DEA, Secret Service. I actually was offered a job with the FBI, but took the NCIS job because it came first. Yeah. But what you need to do is make yourself stand out. Um, you need to learn a foreign language, not Spanish or French. Right, but right. But something that's a little bit different, maybe a dialect that's a little bit different. Something that these agencies might be looking for that they don't see every single day. That you don't have to major in criminal justice, there's accounting degrees, there's all kinds of stuff that you can make yourself stand out. You can go to graduate programs, there's a lot of really good graduate programs mm -hmm. right now. But you want them to remember you. Also, you cannot get into trouble. <laughs> so, um, no arrest record, please. Uh, you And if you do, if something happens, we need you to be truthful about that. There's a polygraph that's involved in the application process. You also have to be able to maintain a top secret clearance. So, what we do is we go talk to teachers and friends and neighbors and anyone that you've ever known. So, trust me, they will say something if there's a piece of information we should know. Yeah. My poor friends have been visited by the men in black several times <laughs> uh, with security re-ups. So, really just stay out of trouble, get good grades just like mm -hmm. the rest of us, but you're, it's a very competitive process. So, you have to be the best of the best to get hired, really by any of these agencies, but specifically by NTS because we're so small. Mm -hmm. There are 1,200 agents worldwide. Okay. So, to and any open season, what we call open season hiring, will open for about 48 hours. The last one we had 4,000 applicants. Are you kidding? No. So. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's extremely competitive. Okay. You have to be, like I said, the best of the best. And that's what we want. So, you want to be the best of the best. You get good grades. Keep your body healthy. Mm -hmm. Keep your mind healthy. Stay out of trouble. And stay safe, which and I think leads us safe. to what you're doing now with right. Safe in the City. What are you most excited for? Yeah, we're super excited about the workshops that, that we've been giving. We've gotten some great response from these uh, girls and women. We've had moms taking it with their yeah, daughters, which a fun is really activity. great. Yeah, great, great thing to do. Um, we're giving them some information that really can help them stay safe, whether it's in a dorm environment, sorority house, living on their own off campus. Um, even while they're in high school, stop mm -hmm. keeping them safe. I feel really good about that. We're also offering some self-defense courses that are taught by the best in the world. Yeah, it, you know, it's and her husband, my husband, <laughs> <laughs> who's um, also an agent. He was also an agent. Yes, we have a counseling fund, not a college fund. For our <laughs> um, but yeah, if you don't take our self defense course, what I would say to anyone out there is please take a reputable self defense course. And reputable is a key word. Uh, that doesn't mean any random martial arts studio that's offering it. Do your background, do some homework into these guys who are offering these courses. You really want to know the down and dirty, how to keep yourself safe in the event that, you know, the boogeyman who doesn't generally exist, but if he does jump out of the bushes, but more likely when that person that you know uh, abandons your trust, you need to know how to protect yourself. Yeah. Well, this has been awesome, and I'm so honored to sit next to someone like you, so oh, thank, you. thank you. If someone wanted to find out more about Safe in the City, or just more about you in general. Mm -hmm. So, um, my website is safeinthecity.co.co. Mm -hmm. I'm on Twitter at Special Agent Heather. It's without the vowels, so. But the agent has the vowel, right? The A. a. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so, it's S-P-C-L-A. G N T. Okay. Heather. Good old Twitter. Good old Twitter. <laughs> My name's too long. Um, and then on Instagram, is it fully spelled out special agent? Special agent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Heather. Heather. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, my regular name, Heather Ryan. <laughs> yeah. uh, and on uh, Facebook, Special Agent Heather. 
um, yeah, look me up. Well, wonderful. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did, and we will see you next week.